Hey, it's Mike Chen. Let me ask you guys something. Have you ever read the Jungle Book or seen the movie? I actually just saw it last week and my number one question after watching the movie is, and that spoiler alert right here just a little bit, how the heck can a grizzly, a panther, and a pack of what looks like a dozen wolves not be able to take down a tiger? I mean, this kid basically took down a tiger and he was on a boat. Anyway, the story is pretty interesting. A kid gets left in the jungle, gets raised by all different sorts of animals, speaks their language, language, but did you know this story is not as far-fetched as you might think? So here are some real-life cases of kids or man-cubs being raised by animals. Number one, Kamala and Amala, also known as the Wolf Girls of India. This is perhaps the most famous and the most controversial story of kids that were discovered to have grown up under the care of animals, in this case, wolves. In 1920, in mid-Napore, India, two girls were discovered in a wolf's den. The older girl, Kamala, was eight, and the younger girl, Amala, was about one and a half. They were not believed to be sisters, and it was unknown if they were left in the wolf's den or taken by the wolves, but it's undeniable the lasting impact it had on them. When they were found, they were naked and ate only raw meat. And I'm not talking about like sushi raw meat, but like an extra, extra, extra rare steak. To the point, if you poked it, the steak would have mood. They didn't just walk around on their legs anymore, but rather on all fours. And they had heightened senses of smell and hearing, much like their wolf companions. The girls were taken in by a local minister, but unfortunately, the younger girl, Amala, soon got sick and died. And Kamala slowly rehabilitated and was sent to live in an orphanage. Number two, the boy raised by chickens. Sujit Kumar was a boy with a tragic tale from Fiji during the late 1970s. He suffered extreme neglect and emotional trauma. Not only did his mother commit suicide and his father passing away, he was kept locked up in the chicken coop by his grandfather. When he was eight, he was found out in public clucking, flapping his arms like wings, pecking at his food, and crouching as if he was roosting and only communicating via clicking sounds. Sujit's story was brought to the world by Elizabeth Clayton, a widow of a mountain climber who died on Everest in 1998. When she found him, Sujit had been tied to his bed for 20 years after being found randomly one night in the middle of the road and brought in for rehabilitation at the Semabula Old People's Home. Number three, the boy raised by monkeys. John is a young boy from Uganda. In 1988, when he was two or three years old, he witnessed his father murder his mother. So he ran away from home and was miraculously cared for in the wild by African green vervet monkeys that protected him and helped him to survive. During his time in the jungle, that area was engaged in a bloody civil war. Because of this, not many humans ventured into the jungle. So when he was finally found in 1991, John's knees were calloused and badly scarred due to him traveling on all fours. And he was suffering from hypertrichosis, which is a disorder characterized by an excessive amount of body hair. Now John's condition has improved. He even has a fantastic singing voice, which allowed him to travel with the Pearl of Africa's church choir. John can still communicate with monkeys, and his story has been told in many documentaries around the world. Number four, the girl raised by dogs. This is a really troubling story. In 2009, a young girl named Natasha was discovered in a dirty small apartment in Siberia with torn and soiled clothing. She had been locked up with other cats and dogs whose behavior she mimicked. For example, she walked on all fours, refused to use utensils, lapped up food from her bowl, barked and enjoyed playing games that dogs would play. According to local police, even though she lived in the same apartment as her father and grandparents, she was essentially treated as a human family pet. Since she was found, her father and mother were arrested and faces up to three years in prison, which seems a very, very small amount of time for what they did to this girl. Number five, the real life jungle girl. Rakam Pan In, whose name I horribly butchered, was discovered in the Cambodian jungle in 2007 after after spending 19 whole years there. I don't think I could spend 19 hours there. Anyway, she had gotten lost while attending Buffalo at the edge of the jungle when she was young and was raised by various animals. So basically a real life jungle book. She only knew three words when she was found, mother, father, and stomachache, and some simple hand gestures. She was identified by her father who said he recognized her from the scars on her arms and legs. She was captured while trying to steal rice in a local village where the 
the police described her as half human and half animal. The girl crawled instead of walked, refused any clothing, and was never fully able to adapt to human society. Eventually, she escaped back to the jungle and has never been found since. Which might actually be a good thing because her supposed father recognized her from the scar she had, which was on her arms and legs, which suggested she was facing some sort of abuse where her arms and legs were often tied up. Number six, Gazelle Boy. According to anthropologist Jean-Claude Auger, while traveling across the Spanish Sahara, he witnessed a boy who was galloping with a herd of gazelles. The boy walked on all fours, ate grass roots with his teeth, basically exhibiting all the traits of a gazelle. From these behaviors, it was estimated that the boy had been abandoned when he was less than a year old. Auger came back to the herd with the Spanish army and captured the boy, which was no easy feat, as the boy could run up to 34 miles per hour. After his capture, Auger tried teaching the boy to speak and to eat with utensils to no avail. The boy eventually escaped, got married, had a kid named Usain Bolt. Okay, that's not true, but he did escape and was never seen again. Number seven, the leopard boy. According to the Times of India, in 1912, a young boy near Assam, India was stolen by a female leopard who did not eat the boy, but instead raised him. When he was found three years later, the boy was able to run at incredible speeds on all fours. And that position was so familiar to him that his toes were even described to be at a right angle. He had very tough skin on his hands and feet, and when he was brought back to his village, he would seize animals and rip them apart using his hands in order to eat them rapidly. So kind of like what I do at a buffet. You know, some of these stories are really sad because anytime you mistreat kids, that's just horrible because they're kids, they're defenseless. But it is really interesting what the human mind and body are capable of. I mean, put under different habitats, humans are able to adapt and even obtain what we would consider superhuman animal-like agilities. Also, I don't know if this is because I just saw The Jungle Book and I wouldn't want this to happen to Mowgli, but I think in some of these cases, it's kind of even cruel to take a a kid who has already adapted to like living in the jungle, living in the wild, and then forcing them back into human society. And I'm not talking about the cases where the kids were abused, but cases like the gazelle boy with the girl living in the jungle because she was being abused at home. But let me know what you guys think. If you grew up in the jungle, was raised by like a pack of wolves or a bear or something, and that's all you knew, would you want to come back to human society? Thank you all so much for watching. See you later.